welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question, come and get some answers, learn a couple less from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax, cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts and allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the nerdiverse welcome to masters of the nerdiverse where we always have such sites to show you you can always find this awesome genetic experiment of a podcast on itunes stitcher spreaker soundcloud youtube iHeartRadio. In the African sovereign nation of Wakanda. Their exports are Vibranium, Peanut Butter Twix, and this podcast. So if you're ever in the neighborhood, just look in the rhinoceros puttock. And it's under some leaves in that puttock. Just don't upset the rhinoceros eye. Because they just may defeat you. I'm of course your host Mike G. And with me as always is my charismatic co-host. Winter stirred of it. I'm trying to think of something cool to say, so I'll just do Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Oh no, <laughs> no, no. oh no, <laughs> <laughs> that's no bueno, bro. No, you can be got, Gucci Gang. I got done hanging out with a bunch of youth, and that's one of their favorite songs. Nice. Yeah, man, you gotta. I guess we have to. I don't know. I haven't so out of touch with with the youth, man. I, th- I think the weird. I think I still think sagging's cool. You know, sagging was never cool, actually. Well, now it's like you can don't sag, but don't have a shirt on. Have like, I don't know. It's a, <laughs> it's a weird mix. <laughs> or it's like we live in a good time for for weird rappers to come out. Yeah, man. Everybody looks like they just stepped out of like Batman, the Dark Knight. You know what I mean? These weird future children. <laughs> right. Or they go like, uh, like. Thanks to Digital Underground, we've got this. Yeah, they look like how punks look in future movies. You know, like Judge Dredd villains. Can't stand kids these days. Or like like, RoboCop 3. Yeah, they look like RoboCop 3 villains. You know, with the the reflective shades and the the pink mohawks. Yeah. And the chains, they all look like uh, like little Uzi Vert. Yeah. But can I say something about the rap community here? Oh, go for it. Go for it, man. I do not like it when you have a song where in the in the lyrics of the song you talk about how I learned how to rap on the streets that sort of thing. I don't like that. I, I just don't like it. It sounds very like dumb. <laughs> where, you thing, know what man. I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, man. It, yeah, it, like it, I learned how to like I got these words I need to express. Like we know we're listening. We don't need to Rap, hear it. Hip hop is very self explanatory, man. They're gonna tell you what they're doing. Either they're moving out weight, they're flipping birds, they're doing break dancing, they're, you know, you know, Superman in that girl whatever. You know, they 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 explain what they do. It's just a weird part of hip hop. And a lot of it's You're going you to know, the club that much? Yeah, you're going to the club with a bottle full of bub all the time. It's very expensive, dude. Being being like records, I have some money for a uh, <laughs> message like, of the nerdiverse. I would like to uh, open a bottle of the of the bubbly, please. I would like to splash a little bit of the Don Perignon, and maybe have a fillet mignon with my champagne. Nah, man, hip hop's weird. Hip hop goes in circles. It's like party hip hop, and then it becomes conscious hip hop, and then it becomes gangster rap. And then it circles back to party hip hop. Right now it's in a funky little slightly party hip hop going into conscience with guys like Kendrick Lamar and you know and Idea and cats like that. So mm-hmm. it's it's weird. But hip hop is weird and it's only gonna get weirder. I thank God for it. Man, so the earth has spun multiple times since we've last spoke. Can you can you catalog your life within the sp- within the span of those spins, sir? Um, yeah, played some Call of Duty, but I'm really focusing on 
like uh, finishing Oz and uh, the sci-fi original series The Expanse. Mm, tell me about that. Well, The Expanse does things a little differently. You see, Ooh. a lot of sci-fi shows they explain like people traveling the universe by like light speed or like they go like a certain speed, like they're traveling faster than the speed of light. Right. But and that's how they can get past the solar our own solar system. But in the expanse, they explain like no human beings haven't reached that point yet. So okay. they colonized the Milky Way galaxy, but they have not been able to go further. Oh, okay. And, and stuff like that. And there's like human beings on Mars that are warring with hu- humans on Earth. It's nice. a great storyline and concept. It's been getting reviews for the science of it, which I don't understand. Interesting. Like like people going, oh, the science of the science fiction is fantastic. <laughs> like, <laughs> you don't hear people go like the fantasy, this dragon in this Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah, the <laughs> Anyways, si- I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I would highly recommend it. There's not a lot of original sci-fi shows that I would say spend your time watching, mm. except for The Expanse. The Expanse. And how are you watching it? Are you Netflixing it up? Are you watching it on Hulu? I am watching it on Amazon Prime. That'll do it, too. All right. Yeah. So check out that's The only Expanse. The pla- that's, yeah, that's the only place I see it, actually, on Amazon uh, Prime. Okay, for sure. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm looking to... After I finished um, Ultra Carbon, I'm looking to, to get into a little bit more sci-fi. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going on hiatus with Netflix and Hulu for a while. Yeah. So it's like I, I spent the last two months paying for it, but I haven't been watching it. I've been watching uh, Oz, Oz and like Sons of Anarchy and all, all the stuff on Amazon. So You might as well have nothing coming out. Like I'm about to drop Netflix myself because they got rid of my beautiful show Burn Notice. So I'm mad at them, so they're not going to get my money next month. Yeah. yeah, but they started the the Joel McHale show with Joel McHale. Oh yeah, because I'm clamoring the... to watch that. <laughs> you don't like green screen? No, uh, man. News shows? I got my Joel McHale shirt on right now, just super yeah. b- d- biting at the bit to watch that stuff. Six man. seasons in a movie, Community. That's what he's done. <laughs> oh my goodness, my nose is bleeding, black blood. Mm-hmm. You know, that's 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 brain blood right there. It tastes like gunmetal. Joe McHale is your kingdom heart? Kinda, a little bit. No, it's not that serious. Like, I just don't care for him. He's fine. It's not like it's not like I hate him like Cuba Gooden Jr., but... Uh, Wait, you hate Cuba Gooden Jr.? Yeah, with an all-consuming passion. What did he do to your family? He knows what he did. <laughs> I can understand, like, I... Okay... I wouldn't suspect someone hating Cuba Gooding Jr. I was expecting like something like Wayne Brady. No, well, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne is fine. If I see, yeah, it's at the point where if I saw Cuba Gooding Jr., I would swerve the car for ten points. Oh, jeez. We'll just leave it at that. But radio and the one where he's on a Hawaii trip and uh, he disrespected Jerry my, Maguire. He just. Dis- he he disobeyed my direct orders, Doug. That's just all I'm going to say. And we've had a falling out ever since. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he disobeyed my directs. You don't do that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Anyway, you have anything else going on for you the week? No, nope, not really. <laughs> Dude, man, that's what's up, man. Uh, weeks. Man, I watched a lot of movies this weekend or last week. Uh, I watched the movie. I finally watched The Ritual. On Netflix, yeah, which is about a group of good old mates from the UK who do a hiking trip to commemorate their lost friend. One of their friends recently died, and they're backpacking through like the Netherlands or something like that. And of course, uh, they decide to go on a detour, and wackiness ensues. It's a pretty standard horror film uh, that deals with weird kind of anxieties about being lost and you know like a reverse cabin fever <laughs> you know what i mean where yeah all you have is the people around you and you're isolated so you kind of go crazy because the people around you are kind of nitpicking at your nerves you know what i mean it's it's a very quiet horror film it kind of reminds me of the the descent in a weird way but also it has mind games like a uh like a uh 
Silence of the Lambs kind of. It's it's a very interesting horror film. I would recommend it. And I don't want to give away too much because what it actually is is kind of nuts. Uh, other than that, I also watched a movie called Lucky Logan. Oh, yeah. Out. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. That's a pretty good one. I like that. It was, it was by the guy who directed all the Ocean's Eleven movies, the Ocean's Trilogy. Am I Am I wrong in that? I'm pretty sure you're right. Okay. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I think it's Soderbergh. That's the guy. Steven Soderbergh? Yeah, there you go. Uh, and it has a very... It's pretty much a southern twang kind of heist movie. And it has... It's a star-studded cast. It has uh, a ton of people in it. Like, their names Daniel are... Daniel Craig. Stephanie. Daniel Craig. Uh, Adam Driver. Adam Driver from Star Wars. Uh, Chris Channing Tatum <laughs> Channing Tatum uh, uh, and uh, Hillary Swank and Hugh Jackman Hugh Jackman's Hugh not Jack in it <laughs> what? Oh. Cuba Gooden Jr. No, yeah. and, and it also had a, dang the name just uh, escaped me it has uh, Seth MacFarlane in it as well in a weird oh. bit part well I, this was a good movie <laughs> it, was, it, it was Seth Logan what? This was a good movie until until that happened. Just, yeah, it's a, it's a very small part, my friend. Very small part. All right, I'll skip it. I, I watched it on Amazon. If you're trying to find it, it's it's new on Amazon right now. And if you like movies like heist movies, like The Italian Job and the, and the Ocean Trilogy, you'll like this one. It's it's because of where it's located and what it's dealing with. It's a very different kind of feel, and it's very kind of match. It's makeshift, and I like that about it. It's like, how the hell are these guys going to pull this off? And it's almost kind of impossible how they do it, but it's still it's fun along the way. Uh, and the last movie I saw this weekend was Black Panther. Black Panther. Mm. Wakanda forever, ladies and gentlemen. Wakanda for freaking ever. I'm not going to go into too much detail, because I am going to do a full-blown review of this film. But... It's kind of my second to first favorite superhero movie of all time. Oh! Mm, it's really, really good. <laughs> it's really damn good. I want to see it again. I want to see it again this weekend. It's super involving and smart and well-directed and well-acted and well-choreographed. And the costuming is amazing. The, and the storyline is solid. The locales are great. Uh, I'm just not going to go into it too much, and you can't really spoil Marvel, Marvel movies because they never have like detailed plots to the point where there's spoilers. Right. You, you kind of know what's going to happen, right? In a Marvel movie, it's not, not, uh, and the last Marvel movie that actually had a decent spoiler was Winter Soldier. You know what I mean? Where it was like what? But in this film, it's nothing really to spoil. It's just like detailed plot points that I'll go into later. But just to let you guys know, if you haven't visited Wakanda yet, please go. It's nice there, and you can get like those really good fantasies you can't find in the U.S. You know what I'm saying? The, the tasty like uh, lychee flavored fantas that are super bomb that are impossible to find in the states, unfortunately. Other than that, uh, still grinding Dragon Ball Fighters. Finally found a team that I'm happy with, and I finally was able to connect the in air combo extension where you have to do light medium light medium and then down h and that pops the guy up and then from there you do light medium light medium and really quick before you spend your double jump you have to do a jump cancel into a down h and then quickly spam light twice it, it's super hard it was super hard to do and i finally my old man brain pulled it together through muscle memory and i can do it now and that was the highlight of my weekend. And Monster Hunter is still fun. So I'm still playing that. And that's pretty much my week. It's a lot of movie watching and a lot of practice in Dragon Ball. Because I'm not going to go online until I'm comfortable with, the, with my play style. Just not going to do it. So, yeah, pretty fun. Pretty fun stuff. Isn't yeah. It, man. Can, it, let me also mention, by the way, yeah. that uh, I've been watching some Olympics going on. The Olympics, Have you been man. No. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have not been following the Olympics, man. Yeah. How's that? They going? have this new guy like taking over. I don't know where Matt Lauer is. He he must be sick or something. Uh, but it's uh, 
it's uh it's very interesting because they're trying so hard to make the winter olympics seem like as popular as the summer olympics yeah they never are man that's why i'm not yeah. really watching dude i'm just uh... i mean they have hockey going on right now yeah hockey's fun damn right <laughs> let's go yeah like uh team usa women's team a uh, women team usa hockey team yeah good enough is going for the gold i think good, tonight. so we gotta yeah we have to watch that to represent yeah. the ladies yeah yeah man like i, w- I watch the Olymp- winter olympics winter olympics sometimes just haven't got into it uh, this this time around, this other stuff's been on. Been trying to catch up on other things. I just haven't. It hasn't engaged me. I just want to see the Jamaican bobsled team, but I don't think it exists this year. So, you know. Yeah, bobsledding's dangerous. I saw someone uh, get to a, to a wreck uh, this year. <laughs> you were like bobsledding's dangerous. Yeah, man, you'll die, dude. Yeah. It's it's like lo- Remember the luge. Where you were like street, I think it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, if it's a super dumb where it's just you on like a on a skateboard and you just <laughs> go down like a, a San Francisco hill at top speeds of like 60 miles an hour <laughs> with just yeah. a helmet on. Oh, man. You can miss me with that. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. News. News. Yes. News. News. This is time for the news. In the no spin zone. <laughs> in the no spin zone, in the 24 hour news cycle, mm-hmm. what's happened? Not a lot because Wakanda's taken over the earth. Uh, in light news, uh, Black Panther has made more in its four days in box office than Justice League did its entire run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's hilarious. So uh, you're saying racism's over? That I'm saying it's only enhanced. <laughs> it, it makes people more salty. I see. What do you mean I can't go to Wakanda? <laughs> well, like I remember back in the day, Martin Luther King saying, "And I have a dream that one day there will be a Black Panther movie." <laughs> it's funny you say that. I yeah. I remember watching interviews with Stan Lee, and this yeah. was before Marvel was a big thing. And they would ask Stan, like, hey, Stan, if you can have any of one of your heroes be a major motion picture film, which one would it be? And he says, besides Spider-Man, I want it to be Black Panther. And oh. I'm like, well, who is that? And I was like, well, it's a character that I helped uh, create that is very um, near and dear to my heart. And I was Did he like, wink, wow. wink when he said help create? <laughs> Probably, because Stan is a thief. I love Stan. Okay, I wanted heart. to get over this. I wanted to go over this yeah, now that you mentioned yeah, it. Stan so, is a super uh, thief, dog. Okay, I just wanted to check. I love Stan Lee. Like, I want to meet him. I want to shake his hand. But his involvement with the creation of some of these things is very light. Like, like he's a very good idea man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he's a very good idea man. Like him and Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and all them cats who created the, 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 golden, the golden age of Marvel with the Fantastic Four was his idea, but he didn't implement a lot of it. Iron Man, he helped create, didn't implement a lot of it. He barely touched, um, like, uh, Hulk, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but, but he came up with the idea and artists designed it. Like Spider-Man, Steve Dicko is still mad at him if he's yeah. alive because Stan took all the credit for Spider-Man but Steve Ditko, you know, came up with the idea of the suit. He came up with the idea with Peter Parker. It was like, it's really a messy situation, dude. Yeah, I remember it's watching really an interview of Alan Moore talking about it. And he's always, he's always, a, he's the salty uncle that you see at yeah, your man. Thanksgiving party. And he's talking about, I think Stan Lee's done some great things, but you know, He's done some terrible things, yeah. and they just list it all. Let's it go, yeah. right? Yeah, man. Uh, Alan Moore is a crotchety old bastard, but he's he's real talk, though. Mm-hmm. Alan Moore is not going to sugarcoat anything. You know, he used no. to worship a snake god, dude. He used to worship I some think kind he of still a, does. I think the snake god got mad at him or something. He's like an actual wizard now. Like him and, yeah, he, him and he rolled a critical one. 
<laughs> he wrote a critical one and got broke off by the snake god, dude. See, yeah, he got he got defeated ultra hard, and then he was like, you know what? Screw the snake god. I was gonna become a wizard and uh, write Swamp Thing and have them steal my ideas. That's the guy who hated the idea of any of his works being uh, changed or updated or uh, what's the word I'm looking for are brought to the silver or big screen. Like he, he was like, I don't yep. want anything to do with V for Vendetta. I don't want anything to do with Watchmen because you guys are going to screw it up. I know you are. There's no way you can do it. I've written these books with the sheer expense of it not being able to be <laughs> translated to anything. And yet you jerks are going to try to make money off my ideals. So he's like, I'm just over it. And he writes whatever he wants now, which is really right. crazy, weird stuff. Like it's, it's like Grant, it's Grant Morrison. Who's a weirdo. It's, it's Frank Miller, who's crazy as a as a bag of cats, and it's uh, Alan Moore. And they're just like the three strange old bedfellows that live in a cave and, and create the weirdest like UK uh, machinations in, in comic history. Well, yeah, he still wor- worships the Roman snake god Glycon. Yeah, man, Glycon's no joke, dude. I just hear like the metal music going. Bam! Yeah, and Glycon is like floating in the background. He's real majestic. Uh-huh. You see Adam Moore with his beard and little baby Glycons are growing out of his beard, bro. You don't want to walk in that room after twelve midnight. Shit's <laughs> jumping off, dude. He like he splits open like a Del Taco burrito, and like a bunch of baby snakes come out, and then he pours <laughs> blood on them, and they grow into humans, and they go do his bidding out in the real world. And bring them back chips and shit. Yeah, man. Those are the benefits of worshipping Glycon. You get to have snake minions like in V. And they go off and do your bidding and bring you back like nacho cheese Doritos and shit. It's amazing. All right. But, but why would you choose a snake god? Like this, because like so dude, many other serpent, ones. Because the, the, the serpent, dude. The serpent. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> He's going to try to <laughs> deceive you. So if you know that going yeah. in, you can prepare for it. But it's you like know? you could go for like give me the god about food. <laughs> give me nah, that god. Man, he doesn't want a gluttony god. He wants like he wants the heathen snake god so that he can have his weird V level snake minions that go out and do his grocery shopping for him because he's a lazy old man, you know. And when mm-hmm. they come back, they turn back into baby snakes. And he just tucks them in his beard for the next time he needs them to go out and pick up groceries. It's all the only reason he worships that heathen snake god is to get groceries. You know, and art supplies, and writing yeah. supplies, and ink, ink, and ink toner, you know, and printer paper and shit. That's, that's all he needs. Yeah. What he needs is a new project, just like Swery and Arc System works. You know what? I love I was just going to keep talking about the weirdness of Alan Moore for the next hour, but I love that I love that segue. Yeah. Let's talk about Swery and Arc System works, a new project, The Missing. What the shit is this? Uh, for those who don't know who Swery or Arc System Works is, Swery is one of the newer kind of Japanese game developers who's really just a kooky guy. He's like, the games he makes are very kind of left of center. Like, uh, Deadly Premonition is a game he made that was just very left of center. Uh, I'm trying to think of another one off the top of my head. Is I can see it in my brain, but I, I can't remember the name. He also... Um, I, I want to say he helped make Lollipop Chainsaw, but I, that, I think I'm incorrect on that. So I'm not going to fully submit to that. But And also Arc System Works are the guys who made Dragon Ball Z Fighters, and they made Guilty Gear. And so Arc System Works is more of a kind of fighting game, super good graphics uh, company that are just make, they're just knocking it out the park right now. So mixing these two peanut butter and chocolate together to make some kind of new project it's like Lord knows what this thing's going to be. It's probably going to have an anime aesthetic. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be weird as hell because Swery just can't think straight. So it's going to be some weird mechanic where you're, you have to take off your clothes and your lewd meter will give you money to buy new armor. Something stupid. Because <laughs> Swery's just a weirdo. And I got, you know, he's awesome for it. He he uh, followed me on on Twitter just for liking one of his posts. The guy's a baller. I love, he, he's awesome. Nice. Yeah, like, why is this guy following me? I'm nobody. 
But uh, yeah, Swery and R6 and Works are coming out with this new game called The Missing. There's very little information on it so far. I'll keep you guys posted because I like Swery and him with actual good graphics in a art systems anime kind of style. I can only imagine how dope that's going to look. Oh, man. Speaking of anime stuff, Dragon Ball Z has announced its first set of DL DLC characters. That's a downloadable content characters. And for y'all... And they're Yu-Gi-Oh characters. That's <laughs> the weird part. It's, it's Bandit yeah. Keith and Seto Kaiba. What is going <laughs> on? Why Bandit Keith? Why now? Yeah. Why all this talk about Bandit Keith? Uh, <laughs> but for all my Dragon Ball Z heads out there, two characters that are being going to be downloadable characters for the fighting game is going to be Brawly, the legendary Super Saiyan and Bardock, the father of Son Goku are going to be the upcoming downloadable characters and I uh, I grew up with Dragon Ball and Brawly is one of those characters that I loved at first as a kid he's awesome, he's just like the legendary Super Saiyan he's like a big juggernaut looking dude and in the, in, I think it's movie nine and movie eight or movie eleven of mm -hmm. the Dragon Ball Z uh, OVAs, he just beasted on everyone. He was just the coolest legendary Super Saiyan dude ever. And but as an adult, I'm like, this character has no plot. He's just a big dumb idiot who just screams Kakarot and gets mad and just clotheslines <laughs> Vegeta in mountains and shit. And I'm like, he's not that interesting. I. I just I, I I felt out of love with uh with Brawly, just because he's so overhyped. Everyone can't stop. Everyone won't shut up about how awesome Brawly is. And he's like, what if Brawly went Super Saiyan three? He would be ultimate. Like, dude, I can't with that. I just can't with the theory crafting. Theory crafting is horrible already. But theory crafting anime is the absolute worst. I will not. <laughs> I can't do it because it gets like so like shown in like Mary Sue ish where it's like this character's so powerful guys. Like he's just too powerful. Like his power level is a quintillion. That means he can teleport. Like ugh, just talking about it exhausts me. Uh but <laughs> Right. And Bardock is uh a character I very know little about, but I just know he's the father of Goku. And he died at the uh, at the destruct during the destruction of Planet Vegeta by the hands of Frieza. But apparently he didn't die, and he was actually sent back in time, and then became the legendary Super Saiyan. In so facto, it's super dumb. It's Dragon Ball. Gotta love it. But I'm assuming that Brawly's gonna play like a tank character. He's probably gonna have super armor. He's probably gonna be big, slow, but do like crazy damage. And for what I was reading on the Kotaku article is that Bardock's going to be like a close in fighter, kind of like Yamcha. So he's probably going to be very heavy rushdown. And uh, apparently he goes Super Saiyan Jin uh, in his ultimate. So we'll see. I need. I, I kind of like those big bulky characters in fighting games sometimes, especially if they're good. So we'll see how that works out and see how that fits in that character in those characters. Okay, Winter, who's your favorite Dragon Ball Z character? Go. Piccolo. Piccolo, yo. Piccolo's my boy. So, okay. okay. Duh. Piccolo's the best. <laughs> I will fight anyone on Piccolo. Piccolo's so cool because yeah. he has that giant he, cape. And he's, like, always mad every time I say He's super upset. Like, yeah. He's the like, best. That's what I remember from my childhood, just him going, saying stuff. And like never, never laughing. Yeah, Piccolo blew up the moon for almost no reason. Like Gohan was going through his uh, Saiyan transformation, where he turns into a giant ape, and Piccolo just blew up the moon. Ne apropos of the Earth, it's super dumb. Piccolo's the best, and he has the special be beam cannon, and he has Namek shoes. Those are brown bottoms. Respect the name of Piccolo. It makes me so upset. I'm happy. <laughs> oh man speaking of things that make me happy there's a new game coming out very soon called Biomutant and a yeah. trailer dropped showing off his character creator and you may ask what is Biomutant and I'm, I'm kind of hard stuck to tell you myself <laughs> what Biomutant is it looks like an adventure game where you create your own creature of some sort it's kind of like 
for those who have ever, ever read Mouse Guard, or that kind of aesthetic where it's like a rat kind of mouse creature with a sword, and it's like an anthropomorphic heroes, where you kind of create your own creature. And... Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I right? liked, uh, like, uh, I was looking at the achievement, or like the ability, uh, I was looking at something while we were talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's dope though. Like, you your character changes based on the things you do during the world. It's kind of like an RPG in that sense, right? But it doesn't just change in skill and abilities. It changes in appearance. So your creature goes from mouse to snake to bird to whatever it needs to be to accomplish its feat. And you can it has supposed to have a very in depth character creator. So if you wanted to create, uh. Uh, Yosaki Jimbo, for those who know who Yosaki, Yosaki Jimbo is, or Jimbo is, he's a rabbit with a blue gi and a samurai sword, and he's the best, also the best. Or you can just mutate your character into whatever you want that best fits your play style. So I'm really interested to see what this game looks like, and it looks gorgeous. It looks really, it looks, the graphics look really good so far. And uh, it's a third, pers third person like adventure game, so it kind of reminds me of old school God of War, almost, where you just run around. Okay, yeah, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? And you kind of like go through an open world and go into adventures. It's probably gonna have side quests. Hopefully, no micro microtransactions. Oh, gee, oh, Dios mio, bro. But it seems like very a lot more open world. It does, than, right? Uh... Yeah. It looks like it's going to have a lot of environments. Like every video game, it's probably going to have a snow level, desert level, forest, water stage. We'll see. It looks really good. I think it's going um, it's definitely going to turn some heads. You know what I mean? Uh, speaking of turning heads, e the Evil Within just got an update. Evil Within 2, mind you, just got an update where you can now play the game in first person mode. Yeah. Yeah. I think I may just go re go. And replay that because I love the Evil Within too. That was a very fun game to play earlier, la later last year, and I raved about it. I'm sure on the show just about how fun it was and how scary and thought provoking it was. And the ending was good. And lately, with me, if it, if you have to end strong for me to really like your product, because the ending is almost as the most difficult thing to land, and. If that game had a, such a really superb ending in my opinion and I just want it more so if I can go back and play this game in third person I'm just going to do it because I never did the new game plus and I'm just going to go and tackle it because between the creature create the, the creature design and the actual main protagonist it's dope have you ever played any of the uh, Evil Within games Winter or touched oh, any yeah. of them? I played the first one I really liked it I think yeah. I personally think they should have, because uh, this is um, kind of like it has some of the creators from Resident Evil yeah. on it, uh -huh. and I really think they should have focused on that instead of like getting into <laughs> Resident Evil like six or some yeah <laughs> um, at the time. Yeah, man. The weird thing about that is is that Capcom during like the two thousands dumped a lot of their talent. A lot of their talent just splintered off and did their own thing. Right. Like the, the guy who did The Evil Within and helped uh, produce The Evil Within 2 was Shinji Mikami. And he's the guy who helped create Resident Evil 4. Uh, which is, for some will say, one of the best video games of all time. Mm -hmm. And they just dumped him off because Cap Capcom was being weird. And he went off and did his own thing. And he created The Evil Within 2. Uh, they did the same thing to... Uh, uh, Hideki Kamiya, and that's in Hideki Kamiya helped create uh, the Devil May Cry series, and he went off to create uh, Bayonetta and uh, Wonderful 101 and Platinum Games and those guys and and Metal Gear Re Metal Gear Revengeance and all that sick stuff. So Capcom really threw the baby out with the bathwater with a lot of their talent. Kenji Inafune, the guy who created Mega Man, you know, he got he got dumped off as well. So a lot of their sins are kind of coming back to haunt them because a lot of the games they want to make 
all the good talent's gone. So what do you do? You know, when you want to reinvigorate something like Resident Evil or Devil May Cry or Marvel vs. Capcom, for that matter, you have mm-hmm. no one left there to create these signature styles of gameplay, and we're left with Marvel Infinite. You know what I'm saying? We're left with yeah, Devil, DMC Devil May Cry, and it's just like pale comparisons to, you know, to previous stellar games. You know, like Resident Evil 5 and 6, in my opinion, were horrible. I didn't like them. Well, f- well, no. Resident Evil 5 was okay. 6 was horrible. 7 was you great. You see, that's what I started in the in the Resident Evil. Ooh, like, I remember... Hard. Sorry, I, man. Well, no, I have, like, great memories of, like, Resident Evil 5, of, like, that, yeah. they're in Africa. That's the one where they're in uh, Africa, yeah, right? Yeah, that one was kind of crazy. Yeah, and then I had, like, played with my friends. I remember, like, okay, did we just finish the boss battle? And then yeah. it comes back up and does more stuff. <laughs> it just shows okay. back up. Like, holy shit, you got to get out yeah. of here. <laughs> yeah, Resident Evil 5 was pretty, was pretty legit, man. Like, my first Resident Evil actually was 2. And that game was hard as hell. And I went back and played 1 on the GameCube, the remake. I never played the original Resident Evil on PlayStation uh, but I played Cold Veronica and Resident Evil Zero. I was a big Resident Evil head because the games nice. were hard and scary, and I like scary games. But but yeah, The Evil Within Two in first person is going to be dope as hell. And I kind of want to just I, I don't know when they're going to do that. I think it's going to be soon that they're going to give that update. I hope it doesn't cost money because I don't want to pay for it. But if it's free, I'm super I'm super down to do that. Well, I predict it's going to be like ten bucks. It is Bethesda. Jeez, <laughs> right. Oh, man. And I don't want to end the news on a sour note, but we're going to have to. Because Shaq Fu is back, bitches. Yeah. Shaq Fu. For those who don't know what the hell Shaq Fu is, or maybe too young. Back when I was a wee lad, Mikey, little Mikey Short Pants, with his Carl Knives and his cross colored jeans and shit. Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal came up with a fighting game where it was Shaq fighting the Nell the Wells of evil and it was a Shaq Fu fighting game and it was absolute garbage. It was not great. I remember playing it on the Genesis as a kid and I didn't buy it. Like One of my cousins of a cousin had it and I went over to their house and said, what the hell is this? Where's Street Fighter? Let's pop in Street Fighter. No, nah, man, I just got Shaq Fu. You get to play Shaquille O'Neal and he throws a basketball at you. I was like, I really just want to play Street Fighter, guys. Can we just pop that in? Uh, I, I, I want to see how you guys got better. You got, you still play? No, all we do is play Shaq Fu all day. And I'm just like, I need to go home. Like, I can't, I can't play this game anymore. So after all these years, all these decades later, Shaq is coming back, not with a fighting game, but with like a brawler, kind of like a Streets of Rage, like like a uh, like Final Fight kind of style. Yeah, like, like, like garbage. School. Yeah, like oh. garbage. What? Mm. <laughs> I, sorry, I, will not I, have, I will not have you sully the good names of Streets of Rage or Final Fight or Golden Axe or any of those. Oh, okay, cool... I like Golden Axe. Yeah, I like those Golden. good side scrolling Nin- yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the sides arcade side scroller, Turtles in Time, X Men, the Spider Man, the Alien vs Predator Capcom game. Side scroller beat 'em ups are the best. <laughs> yes. I wish they were I wish they were just more prevalent nowadays. I would love a good side scrolling game. But not Shaq Fu though. No. Shaq is a businessman and he seems like a really decent guy when he's not asking Kobe to tell him how his ass tastes. And uh it just seems like a cash grab and in an age where everything's a cash grab, I can't support it, man. <laughs> I super can't do it, but it looks serviceable. I haven't touched it, so I don't know how the gameplay feels, but it looks serviceable, so we'll see how it goes, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure who's developing it. Probably him. <laughs> He's probably just making it out of Unity or something, but right. I don't want to tease it too much, but it's supposed to be coming out this year. I'm, su- I'm surprised he's not hawking it during every NBA game, but if you see sac- parents out there who kind of don't know what video games are popular and buying for your kids this coming up holiday season in the winter, don't buy Shaq Fu, okay? Your kid does not want it, okay? Don't buy it. If you want to buy it for you, that's great. 
just out of a sense of weird nostalgia. But okay, I'm gonna go on a real, a real, really weird little tangent here about All right. parents who buy here we kids go. shitty games because they don't know how to video game. I'm gonna give you a couple of pro tips. If tip number one, tip, <laughs> tip number one, you see what everyone else is buying. First of all, you kind of look over, you tilt your little head, you see, oh, this, he's picking up uh, Mario Odyssey. Oh, they're picking up uh, Grand Theft Auto. They're picking up Red Dead Redemption 2. That's one way to do it. Two, you ask your children because they're going to tell you what they want. They're probably going to be dreaming about it and drawing about it all day. You just ask your child what do they want. If they want something that's too mature for them, you tell them it's too mature for them. And have them pick something else. Little Timmy, who's eight years old, should not be playing Mortal Kombat 11. Maybe you can buy him a less violent fighting game, like Dragon Ball Z Fighters or something like that. You talk to your children. Thirdly, you have a conversation with the actual clerk. Because most of the time, GameStop dudes, if they're not brain dead, will know how to talk to human beings mm-hmm. and have a conversation with you. And kind of go through what's best suited for your child, depending on their age range. Uh, your child wants dead, dead or alive beach uh, volleyball ma'am, edition. I don't get I paid think. enough, ma'am. Just look at the look at the wall and pick one, and I'll get you whatever you want. You may get that guy, but from my experience, a lot of these guys are bored out of their skulls and they want to talk video games with somebody, even if that person does not really know what's in the know. So you just say, my kid's into X, Y, Z. They're this age, and they'll point you in the right direction. And it's going to save you a lot of money, and it's going to save little Timmy's lip being poked out because he got a crappy game that nobody wants. And it's happened to all of us growing up. You know what I mean? We had those stinker games. Luckily, I had a mother who was very in-depth with what I wanted, and I never really, I never asked for anything that was too insane, except for Mortal Kombat 2. She almost, I almost did not get Mortal Kombat 2 because uh, of the fatalities and stuff but she said it looks too cartoonish so as long as it wasn't realistic she was fine with it but uh yeah just research it talk to your children talk to the teller that was, no it's not going to steal you steer you wrong you know what i'm saying do it do it All right uh any, any news that comes to mind winter before we close out the news section um I would check out, if you're into tabletop RPG stuff, check out what's going on over at Wizards at the Coast, Dungeons yeah, & Dragons. Do it. They've, they started a new thing called D&D Beyond where you can now, for like a subscription fee, like three bucks, you get like all the rule books and everything on this like Wikipedia style uh, website. And that's been beneficial for, I can see that being beneficial for a couple of things. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's all. That's really been on my mind because that's why I looked at a couple hours ago. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, I remember always seeing Witches of the Coast in, at the Universal City Walk, and always looked so interesting walking into that place. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, dude. There's not not a lot of movie news because you know Wakanda is infinite, but uh, mm-hmm. just little stuff here and there. You know, like this is what. Captain Marvel's suit may look like yada yada just not very heavy stuff in that matter so that was good business in regards to the news and now we're going to go to one of our favorite I would say sections of the podcast is the question and answer section yeah if you have a question for me or Winter here in regards to the to the world the universe everything you can send that question to Masters of the Nerdiverse cast at gmail.com. You may say, Mike, I did not hear you. I was wrestling one of the Titans and I almost got uppercut with a rising upper. And I would say, oh, sorry to hear that. But you can send your question to Masters of the Nerdiverse cast at gmail.com. You ready to answer some questions, sir? You ready to Let's answer some it. questions, bro? Yeah, first question. What is your oldest and most prized possession? My uh, first guitar that I got, I have yeah. still. Uh, it was three hundred dollars that my dad gave me all of his change 
to pay for. Nice. Yeah. And yeah, it was at a garage sale and yeah, I still have it. That's what's up, man. That's pretty good. That's a very good one. Mine's is a little more nerdy, which is I have an unopened copy of Street Fighter 2 for the Super NES that I just, I've been staring at since I was a child. Because I accidentally got two for Christmas. I got one from my mom and one from like an aunt. Yeah. And I just kept one because my dad was like, why would you open both? That's stupid. Don't open both, you little idiot. And so yeah. I've kept it in this plastic this entire time. Uh, How much is it now? Have you checked the price? No, I need to. It's probably not that expensive. It's probably not that much. For the NES, you said? For the Super, or, Super NES. Uh, Super, Super, okay. Yeah, that's one of my favorite prized possessions. I have a Spawn number one, too, but I know that's not worth anything. Uh, and I have a M&M that a, uh, I got way back, like a plush M&M that I got back like in my first year of high school from my high school sweetheart who gave it to me. I really very fond of that. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. I'm All not... right. Let me give you um, a price check here. Okay. <laughs> This is good. We're doing uh, Let's do uh, it. Antique Roadshow. Let's do an Antique so, Roadshow it up. Let's do it. So if it was just the box, you're looking at there's a there's the auction going on just for the box. That's two dollars and twenty five cents. Okay, that makes me that makes me very sad. Okay, you going? If you have the game, and they're saying Turbo for some reason, uh, I don't think it is Turbo. Two Turbo. Yeah, I have yeah. the original. Yeah, I, yeah, this isn't Turbo. Uh, Four twenty five, and that's out of the box, and there is no box now. Four dollars and twenty five cents. Yeah, just for the the cartridge. Okay. Now we're, I'm 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 doing a little bit of drama, getting higher and higher. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so now we're getting to uh, Street Fighter Two with box instruction booklet, and but it's opened, it's been played. You're yeah. Looking at about. This guy is selling it for forty bucks. Buy it now with Not five bad. bucks. Yeah. Now for you, sir. Now this is the first. This is the only one that I see here. Yeah. Street Fighter Two, nineteen ninety one, yeah. Super Nintendo, SNES, factory sealed. He is selling it for a hundred and fifteen dollars. Oh man! Well, let's gas up the car. We're going to Vegas. Let's go ahead and sell that bad boy now at the <laughs> Antique Roadshow. Now, it has five days left, and he has yet to get a bid on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. But I, you're My prized possession, at, man. You're looking at 75 bucks. I That's think. not bad. A hot 75. Like, that'll, get, that'll get us a dinner, a nice little <laughs> seafood dinner. Now, All tell right. me, what was the other one? I have to look it up now. Spawn, you said? Yeah, Spawn number one. <laughs> I know that's not worth anything. <laughs> Because they flooded the market with them bad boys back yeah. in the 90s. And I was I was an idiot, idiot enough to buy, like, five copies because I thought I was doing something. Well, uh, <sighs> people selling it for three bucks. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. It's not worth anything. <laughs> it's like another one for 15. I, I look like 15 is the highest I've seen. Uh, yeah, spy number one is not worth anything, like. I used to have some really good comics, but I think my dad has them somewhere. I don't have to ask him. Back when I was a kid. But, uh, yeah, just some old video games. I have some old posters that are signed. Nothing really crazy. That was fun. <laughs> that was, you know, that was yeah. dumb. My, my Maybe most prized, I should have told you about my, mo my most prized possession is like worth less than $100. That's beautiful. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. It's, it's the sentimentality that counts. It's not the yeah. price tag. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. I have oh, two. Yeah. I have two Simpsons. Like uh, the, they came out with these action figures that will that when you attach them to like a like a setting that you would buy separately, of course, they yeah. would have a something. They would have like one of their famous sayings. Like I had Troy McClure. <laughs> nice. And he would say one thing on a different like set that you would like put him in but then if you had like a different set he would say something different and i was like man i'm gonna these are gonna be worth something when i grow up and they're like a dollar more than yeah. what i like i made like i bought them 10 years ago doesn't so, that just feel great like you've been holding yeah. on to this thing and keeping it in mint condition well that no just means reason. you hold on to it longer until it comes back in rotation yeah 
that Street Fighter copy, once Street Fighter 2, the movie comes out again in 2025, it's going to be worth $200. And then we can really do it big. And this is just the price that they can get. You could probably go, look, I'll, I'll, 80 bucks right now out the door. Boom. You want it? You You want it? it? You want it? Blanca's in it. It's unopened, bro. You just put it on your wall. You put it like in a shadow box. Eighty dollars, a quick like, eight. Like, were you expecting it to be like eight hundred bucks? No, <laughs> I knew it wasn't worth anything. Like, okay. it's just one of those things where I just was like, it's just mine. And I just, I like looking at it and thinking about all the years of looking at it. You know, what <laughs> I mean? it's super dumb. Second question, because <laughs> I need to yeah. so I need to sober up from that one. Uh, <laughs> It's connected to the third question, probably. It's super connected to the third question. <laughs> it's super. <laughs> good one, good one, good one. That's some inside baseball, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what's your favorite comfort food? Oh. When you're just feeling down in the dumps, you need something that just calls, it just, it just hits your rib and it makes you feel better. I'll give you my Hollywood Squares answer. I prefer seafood. Any food that I can see. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yes. So I like I like uh, I yes. like chicken fried steak. Yeah, chicken that's fried steak. Uh, That's what's up. A sh- like a Cajun boil, is it called? Where you just a bag like, full of like seafood and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And corn. Wait, I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. That's what's up. Boiling crab, baby. Because it's just something about like having just like digging into a carcass. Yeah, <laughs> just by, just put, putting your arm into the, the the chest cavity of a chicken and yeah. just ripping out meat to to eat on. Like, uh, like one of those uh, like uh, grocery store rotisserie chickens. Those are man. Those come through in a pinch. I'll yeah. buy a grocery store rotisserie in a hot second. Slice that mess up, make it into a sandwich. <laughs> do man. your own remake of uh, of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, like, man. <laughs> brains <laughs> just rip into yeah. its chest. And yeah. then your parents walk in like, what the hell? You look up with a crazy look in your eye. Yeah, you're going to therapy. It was only five bucks. Mom, it was five. <laughs> don't, don't judge me. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite comfort food? Dude. Uh... Dude, like, like you said, man, like, there's something about, like, layered food that's really comfy to me. So, like, like gumbo, like a nice hot bowl of gumbo with, like, some rice and some just whatever crazy stuff you can fit in it, the better, man. Like, uh, with crab legs and, and dewy sausage and chicken and some fish. Like, my grandmother used to put shark in her Mm. gumbo. Oh my goodness! Like that's that hits it hits me right in the stomach. And like my mom would make mac, my mom would make spaghetti with fried chicken. You can tell why I'm why I'm a little I'm a big guy, but uh, yeah. well for my comfort food, she would make me a, a a thing of spaghetti with some fried chicken, and that just hits me right at home, like the most comfortable. Something about the mixture of chicken and fried uh chicken and uh spaghetti that just breaks my brain with like garlic bread uh man it's a nigh defeatable uh co- combination not many places allow this combination to happen but if you no. can find it it's super delicious all right you're making me hungry we gotta get going yeah <laughs> about to fry me up some chicken right now all right uh last question what's something that you were overhyped for only for the subject to live up to its expectations Uh, you go first. I'll go first because I've had a little bit of time to think about this, and it was actually Mortal Kombat Two. And when you're a ki- when I was a kid, Mortal Kombat was huge. It was it was a huge kind of deal because the game was crazy and the movie was crazy, and we just lost our minds about the Mortal Kombat game and blood and the blood code and played in on Genesis because you can actually see the blood and the fatalities and, you know, but this is before the internet. So you had to 
kind of like, man, do you know how to do Sub-Zero's Fatality? No, man, you gotta go and figure it out. There was a lot of whispers about the gang. And when they announced Mortal Kombat 2, the entire school just exploded. Like, <laughs> like we didn't know what to do with ourselves. We were just, we were like crack fiends. We were just scratching, waiting for the game to come out. And the commercials look cool. And it was like Reptile. And you're like, what, what was that? <laughs> it just it was so hype. And I was praying to get that for Christmas. I was pray- I was in church praying for Mortal Kombat. It sounds so sacrilegious. But I was praying, please let my mom get me Mortal Kombat 2. I was so hyped for it. I, I was I had to wait for Christmas. I, I made sure my grades were all sh- like straight A's and B's. And I was like, there's nothing that's going to stop me from getting this game. And... It was the last thing I opened was a, it was a box with Mortal Kombat 2 and Maximum Carnage because I wanted that really bad as well as a kid. Yeah. And, and I opened it and I got it on the Super NES and it had blood, the blood in it. And it was amazing. I loved that fighting game so bad. And then you'll go to the arcade and it was there too. So the things you learn at home uh, were you could do at the arcade with your buddies and you know you put your quarter up and you stay you stay on until you lose oh it's so much fun like the hype around Mortal Kombat 2 was palpable and when the game actually came out it was damn near perfect it just it's one of those things where the hype absolutely lived up uh, the, the the product lived up to the hype absolutely oh man I can still gush about that anything come to mind there buddy oh yeah so back in the day I, I was like done with playstation xbox and i went through a phase of going like i'm gonna join the revolution and not go for any of the like the first party like game systems uh. i'm gonna go with the ooh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, what is wrong with you man <laughs> at the top of like this is like this is going to i in my mind like this is going to change the gaming world yeah man like, like this is going to be like every like they advertise like every game that you that you, they'll have on there is is free to play. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember like, that. Yeah, and I'm like, this is great. It's gonna change everything. And my friend, they're telling me like, Winter, you don't understand. <laughs> this is not gonna work out. But I'm like, well, Levar Burton has has like gotten on, and like he's gonna do his like they're gonna make special reading rainbow ones for. <laughs> <laughs> or like, I, like that should have been the first like uh, the ooh yeah, bro. Idea. Yeah, man, I was super it, remember that. And I still have mine. It was like it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, come on. How do you and, defeat that? Yeah, well, very easily. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it turn out? Did it live up to expectations? Were you like, this is the best thing ever? It lived up to the expectations of the people around who were going, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> oh, no. That's why I laughed so hard, because the Uyo was infamous for being, like, a really big system that was good. That was, like, DOA, dude. Like, it was dead on dead on arrival, man. Like, Well, here's the thing. It, it, it started off de- good, I would say. It started off good, but yeah. then what happened was that the they weren't expecting certain things to take place. For instance, copies of games. They didn't expect mm-hmm. people to go, wait a minute, this is just like me playing Android games mm-hmm. on a account. Yeah. They were not expecting that. They were hoping to get more like big developers to put their games on there, but it was just never going to happen. Yeah. And they were wanting a lot more of a hipster community, but the problem is hipsters are a bunch of liars. They don't want to <laughs> truly do anything. <laughs> They're like communists. They don't really want to. They, <laughs> they don't, don't want really to, want to do it. Yeah. They don't. They they will talk a good game, but when it actually is time to do it, they're like, ah, now we're disinterested. We're gonna go into the other thing we can talk about and not do. Oh man, the ooh yeah, that reminds me of uh, the kid on the block who had the uh, the Turbo Graphics sixteen, mm-hmm. and it was like that's the coolest system ever. It's like a thousand dollars. Nobody can afford the Turbo Graphics sixteen. And it's like it sucks though. It only has bonks. What, are you gonna, what else are you gonna play? We're gonna play uh, Art of Fighting. No, it's still garbage. It doesn't even have Madden. You're like no, but it's like a thousand dollars. Like it doesn't matter. Right. This, this is whack. It's like the Neo Geo. Super expensive systems, man. Like the craziest system I ever bought 
was oh i kept it very mundane like i bought like a psp only because they had bleach game bleach fighting games on it because i was a big bleach nerd back in the day but other than that i kept i kept it very simple like maybe the gamecube but the gamecube had metroid prime and mario sunshine and just the gamecube and soul Calibur 2 oh such a Oh man, that lifts up the expectation as well. What are you looking forward to this uh, next coming week? Uh, I'm looking forward to several days off at work. Yo, uh, my last day at work is kind of like there's no nothing really going on. It's yeah. an all staff meeting, okay. so I just sit there and crack jokes about how I hate everyone. There. Nice. <laughs> you sound like me at I, work. Yeah, I'm like the the old old Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Um, You're like Quinn in uh in Jaws, who just sits in the back and, walk and listens to everyone bicker. And then you're like, I'll give you the head, the fin, the whole damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. farewell and adieu to ye old Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to the ladies of Spain. For we've received orders to go back to Boston. For a well in adieu till we see you again. Whatever. So what do you have going on? <laughs> <laughs> Finish up this work week for one. <laughs> Regaining my sanity. Uh, I want to watch that Full Metal Alchemist movie. That's on Netflix that's floating around. Yeah, it's like a live... Huh? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> we can See, just move on. I love it. I love it. That's the right answer. I have to know. I have. To, I love Full Metal. The answer is don't worry about it. Like, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> just, 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 just go about your business. Right. You, you got other stuff you need to do. But no, I got to check it out. I have to feel the pain. So I'm probably going to talk about that next week. Uh, got to do a couple more recordings this week. Finish out this month. Strunk. So definitely got to do that. Uh, hopefully be high rank in Monster Hunter by the end of the week and hopefully I'll have the stones to actually jump on multiplayer or online for Dragon Ball Z Fighters we'll see how that goes and to get a haircut because I'm starting to look like Grizzly Adams and that's never a good look you know, <laughs> okay yeah I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta do some uh, some tidying up as it were Make sure, I want I want to try to get the Killmonger hair but I don't know if it's going to work out. We'll see. Oh, man. Any passing thoughts before we close this bad boy out? Um, always let your conscience be your guide. That's very good advice. Man, something crazy is going on outside of my house. I think the wolves are among us. So let me wrap yeah. this one up. Is uh, it your weekly drug bust to make, to make it look like the cops are doing something? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hawthorne, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, I've been watching too much S.H.I.E.L.D. No, man. It, it, looks, it, it just looks super busy. I don't know. I'm going to have to go check it out. It looks like something crazy is going on. Oh, it's just uh, nuts. So my passing uh, words this week is... is be careful out there. The world's a crazy place. Keep your P's and Q's about you. Uh, never take responsibility for something that you didn't do. Never miss the opportunity to tell someone you love them. And if you can, try your best to tell the truth. Uh, you can always find this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. And if you like what you're listening to or want to leave a comment or a question, please do so on YouTube. Leave a five-star rating, four-star, zero-star. I just want to hear what you have to say. So please do that, and I will give you a thousand thank you very muches. I've been, of course, your host, Mike G. And I've been your co-host, Winter Stewart Event. And we're always going to ask you to take that one step beyond. Beyond.